uh, I'm Victor Schelling. I'm also with uh, Wikibase Solutions, like the authors. Um, he, I will share my screen, I guess, because <laughs> you're here for the presentation and not for my face. Can we see it? Hot if you could give me a verb, uh, uh, some feedback. Or I can check this screen and go into an infinite loop. All right. It's okay. Yeah, we can see it. This looks okay, yeah. perfect. Then I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, so my presentation is sort of an extension of Hot's uh, presentation. Um, he talked about uh, multi-content revisions and why that's uh, why that's important. So I want to dig into that a bit more and show you how we technically impl implement it, uh, what is multi-content revisions, and also what we are coming from, uh, why we arrived at multi-content revisions, um, and why we use it. Um, it's important to say that multi-content revisions is a building block that we use, uh, which is uh, which only gets you to a certain level in in what we want, and from there on we took our own path. Um, but I think it's uh, interesting to show you uh, also that path that we took. Uh, it's not maybe for everybody, but uh, it's open for discussion. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Um, this is what I just already mentioned um so sorry very good time for my contact lens to uh, <laughs> go wild okay i think it's back um so why it's important and how media wiki supports it uh, that's what i will dig in and then from there on how we move forward so um uh, a lot of our customers uh, would like to have, use a good YC Wick editor, a what you see is what you get editor um, for creating all of the content in their wiki. Um, and they also want structured data uh, uh, through templates such as uh, um, metadata that you put next to your pages, uh, which you want to store with SMW and Cargo. Um, both have great um, instruments to be able to control this. Uh, first of all, the YCWIC editor, of course, you have the uh, visual editor from uh, from MediaWiki and Wikimedia. Um, and then uh, you have also TinyMCE, which is also a great project. Um, and of course, the structured data uh, is what we use with uh, what we all know and here for with Semantic MediaWiki and Cargo. Uh, we want to put templates uh, in all pages and we want these templates to be present. We do not want users to delete them uh, because it allows us to store valuable information, maybe not even information that the user explicitly asks to store on that information so that we can create uh, query overview pages, find stuff in our wiki, et cetera, et cetera. So if your, temp if your wiki depends on template presence, which is, I think, uh, the case for all of us, um, and we want to also we want also want to support a good structured data setup through forms. Uh, you're going to have a hard time just uh, with a visual editor. Uh, at least that is uh, traditionally before we found out about uh, multi-content revisions. Um, so traditionally, uh, or at least that's how it should be. All the pages should have a template call. Um, for most of us, when you open source code of a page, you will immediately be greeted uh, with a template call in there, uh, which has a lot of structure, lots of structured data. Um, using that in your visual editor both uh, shows up with a visually displeasing result, and it is also a bit error prone because a user can delete it, uh, etc. cetera. Um, for example, you all know this image probably, uh, you have a, a big structured uh, template at the top of your page, uh, and you open it up with the visual editor and, well, there's a big box there which you can edit, of course. Uh, and Wikimedia or MediaWiki, uh, Wikimedia Foundation, of course, supports the visual editor, uh, has built great features to manage data inside structured uh, uh, templates. Um, but there are uh, visual displacements and also it doesn't allow you to do everything that you want with forms. Um, for example, autocomplete uh, can be a bit uh, off 
or it can have some trouble with, for example, widgets or uh, SMW. I don't know if that's still a problem, but there used to be the case that when you open up a visual uh, a page with the visual editor and you use Semantic Media Wiki, it would show SMW off and on inside of your text that you're editing. So basically, uh, this is a uh, something that that we think that we should find a solution for um and of course we want we want these templates to have all of the freedom itself that they deserve uh, we want to have great input types uh, which pageforms already offers and, and ws form 2 pageform for example with our multiple instance type input types um well and uh, advanced autocomplete options this is something that the visual editor sometimes falls a bit short on it might develop more in the future, um, but to allow the total freedom of the visual editor and the structured templates, we we uh, feel that we need to separate them. Um, and therefore a separation of content is a separation of concern. Um, so moving on, um, I can show you already what we ended up uh, with. Um, just to... Uh, to show you what what we kind of want to end up with in this presentation so this is <clears throat> this is a typical example of a uh, well it's it, this is a complete csp environment that uh, wikibase has brought online uh, but this includes multi-content revisions as i want to demo it to you uh, which means that the visual editor content is separated from the structured data um, actually what you see right here is this content is totally separate from this content while this is in a template and this is in uh, in the source code itself uh, you won't be able to see it uh, if i open up the source edit see you just see here the oh, i have the code mirror extension enabled but you just see the the raw source text here without the template and yet um, there is a template on this page storing information uh, i can also browse the properties and I can see there that it stores all kinds of information, uh, which is input inputted in the sidebar. And even if I go to the visual editor and I hit edit, I'll be able to edit the content of the tag of the page uh, without being bothered by anything that's in the template. I won't have that big box at the top. So how do we end up here? Uh, let me see if, <laughs> uh oh, my presentation is a bit messed up. Let me just reload it. Yeah, here we go. So we found the content as we've uh, teased a lot of times before in uh, multi-content revisions. I'm seeing a black screen, guys. Hopefully uh, I can resolve that. I think I may have to stop sharing my screen for a while. I'm sorry for this technical issue. Let's see if I can bring it back. Oh, um, are we back? I think so. But still, it doesn't go into presentation mode. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How to solve this? Uh, I think I'll just continue uh, like this. Because uh, maybe it will otherwise take a bit too long. Um, so, to go, uh, to go on, we found a solution in multi-content revisions. Um, and what multi-content revisions uh, allows you to do uh, in its most basic sense is it allows you to store content in multiple slots on a page. Um, and how does this work? Well, in a vanilla setup, a page, uh, any traditional page uh, has just one slot available to it. Uh, which is the, a slot called main and it has the content model wiki text well a uh, the multi-content revision system uh, allows you to define multiple slots alongside your main slot in which you can store content uh, that can also have its own content model like json but also like wiki text um, so actually all pages are confronted with slots it's just not uh, utilized that there are multiple slots on a page uh, too often uh, I think it's used uh, uh, primarily by Wikimedia Commons right now uh, to store data for Wikibase in it, metadata. Um, but that's not how we are going to use, of course. 
So if you open up any page on, for example, Wikipedia, and you uh, check the result of that page with the API, uh, you can see that uh, it already tells you actually that the revision stores its content in the main slot, which has the content model wiki text. So uh, we want to expand this using, uh, or at least, uh, no, that's a bit uh, too ahead of schedule, I think. But uh, with multi-content revisions, you can register additional slots with the same or a different content model. So that might be a solution to our problem uh, because uh, the, the slots, the MCR is very well integrated. It integrates with pages version history. It integrates with media wiki functions. Uh, you can use the API to visit uh, slots, write to slots, read from slots. There are PHP functions available for um, interacting with slots. And it is already considered complete since 2019. I think uh, Daniel Kinsler is also part of this uh of the smw con this year i saw that he wrote most of the documentation so he might also have been involved in the technical part of it uh, but anyway um what mcr will allow us to do is store our template content in its separate own slot where it won't bother anybody uh but uh where we want to use it at least the visual editor won't be bothered by it uh, as we just saw um, so what we want to do is find a way how we can store our template calls of the structured data inside its own slot. Um, so now that we've uh, note of this system and we know that we can store our template in its own slot, uh, we can look how to integrate uh, this into our wiki. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's integrated well with the APA, API and PHP, but that's about it. There's no not really a graphical integration yet of imp or implementation yet in in media wiki for slots so uh, we need to change that um, i think Alt already mentioned that replace text has been modified now for it um, it also integrates well with the version history of a page if you open up the version history of any page and there were slot per edits present in there uh, it will tell you actually uh, in line with the main slot edits that uh, edits have taken place and you can go back to revisions also of older slots uh, but graphically that's about it there's no real interaction possible so um, this is the part where um, where it stops a bit from what we have available and then what we can do with it uh, because uh, yeah there are tools available but not graphical uh, uh, tools for using it in the wiki so uh, we have uh, one import develop one important thing and that is ws slots uh, ws slots will allow you to define extra slots for your wiki i will go into that a bit more later um, and it will allow you to also to have the text parsed which is in that slot which is also very important and not native behavior and additionally additionally wiki based uses chameleon ws form and semantic media wiki uh, to bring uh, the result that i just showed in the demo to integrate it into the skin to be able to write to the slot and to be able to read from the slot um, i'm going to give a fair heads up this can be quite a puzzle um, to to understand and also for me to explain so uh, go easy on me please if i uh, if i sound a bit vague uh, i'll do my best um, so I think uh, it's good to start with a basic example to uh, sort of fall back on that if, if I want to explain things. So let's uh, let's say you have a very simple page, which uh, you normally edit with the visual editor, of course. Uh, you have content on there, a how-to guide or whatever, and you want to store a ver version number on that page. And you want to store that version number uh, on all pages. It's a, it's a sort of a requirement. Um, you don't want people to delete it, um, and we want to store it in Semantic Media Wiki so that we can use it in queries and whatever. Uh, so we're going to need to define a slot called version slot. And in this slot, we're going to store a, a template call, of course, called something like version data store. Uh, we, we're going to go into that later. But first, let's try to set up a slot. So for this, we have uh, created our extension called WS Slots. Uh, allow slots to be parsed through appending to main. So this is this is a bit of a difficult situation. Maybe something can be improved uh, into the core for that later. 
but right now, by default, slots are not uh, parsed. That means that if you would put a template call in a slot and it would set data using Semantic Media Wiki, it would not automatically store that semantic data into the database. So WS slots uh, checks all the slots that it has defined it. Uh, and uh, when the page is parsed, it adds it to the parser so that we achieve uh, it being parsed in the end. Uh, there is a limitation uh, of that, and that is that a template, uh, because of the appending, um, all of the template calls inside the slots should not output anything verbally. Because if you do so, um, it will appear on multiple places of your screen because it depends it to uh, anything on your page. Uh, there are multiple components of uh, on any page that are working together and WS slots appends it to these uh, components individually. Uh, so we won't be bothered uh, by it uh, being stored uh, double in the semantic database. Uh, but at least we don't want it to output anything verbally because then, then it will end up on the page. So we want to make these templates that run in slots silent uh, and just use it for storing data and applying logic uh, in a set or a cargo uh, store. So the setup of WS slots is very simple. Uh, it's a PHP uh, configuration which you put into local settings or, uh, or uh, any other settings file that you use in your wiki. Uh, in this example right here, I already included that we're going to work with the uh, slot called version slot, which has the content model wiki text. Uh, as mentioned before, this can also be something like JSON. Uh, in this example, we want wiki text, of course, we want to, because we want to parse it as semantic, semantic media wiki uh, properties. And uh, I, I won't stick with it this too long. It looks like uh, rubbish anyway, uh, we're not in presentation mode. Uh, but if anybody uh, wants to look, uh, go back into the, to this presentation later and uh, wants to have a diagram overview of, of what happens a bit uh, when storing data, uh, you can have a look at this. Uh, and moving on. Um, so I think um, in this step now we have the slot defined in our wiki uh, and we can go on to uh, take steps to, to include the version number actually on our page itself. Uh, we can store data in it, uh, and I'm going to assume already that uh, we have a template which does, uh, which does a set on the version number uh, parameter that uh, that is inputted to it. So we we need to find a way still to get the template in that slot. Uh, we can retrieve data from the slot using uh, ask or show parse functions or any other equivalents from Cargo, of course. Uh, but now at least we tackled the first step of defining that slot. Um, so yeah, um, already mentioned before, it's a quite a puzzle, but things will get even more tricky now because, uh, uh, and, and this is not, uh, I, I want to emphasize that this is not um, critical to the workings of slot. This is just how Wikibase implemented it. Um, you can do anything you want with slots, but uh, we've had to find a way, of course, to write to the slot and see things from the slot. Uh, and in the end, we want to end up with an infobox style content area for displaying our version data. Uh, so we had to find a way to do that. Um, we don't want the slot to output anything verbally because then it will end up on multiple pages of our page. So we have to find a designated spot for it. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit ahead of my slides, <laughs> sorry. We have to find a designated spot uh, on our pages for um, interacting with our slot data. Um, just I just put a reminder on here that templates should not include any verbal output again. Um, requirements as a consequence, yes, have a template in your slot only storing data, retrieve and interact in a separate spot, but where? So that's where I'm heading now. Um, so uh, I'll just go quickly back to the example page that I had up before. Um, as you can see here, we have a designated spot for interacting with our slot. Um, but how do we accomplish this? Um, well, we used something uh, called, uh, which is sort of built into Chameleon, but also sort of not. Um, and that is a uh, custom Chameleon uh, wiki text component. Uh, a component in, in Chameleon language is a UI component. Um, that means, for example, uh, this is a component at the top of the page here, which is the header component. Uh, this is the main content component. 
uh, and at the bottom there's the footer component. Uh, so, uh, and in Comedian, Comedian, you have lots of uh, control over what you want to do with this component, with these components. Uh, and what we did is we defined a our own custom component which runs as a sidebar on any page. Um, and what that component simply does it is it renders wiki text. Um, and that wiki text is then uh, used to retrieve uh, data from the slot and show it into a form and be able to write it to a form. So, yeah, that's that's what I just explained a bit before. Um, it is important to note that the way that we use uh, setting up custom chameleon components for rendering wiki text uh, does not require a fork of chameleon. It is native. Uh, you just need to know how you do it, and I don't think it's really documented. Um, but I have some good news for you guys, and that is that Robus will give a tutorial on this during the SMWCon 2021. So you can all follow his tutorial on how to uh, set that up. And I'll skip that part because it will just uh, take me a bit too long to uh, to go through. Um, but basically, that will allow us to, uh, to render... Uh, in a fixed position, a piece of wiki text that is not bothered by the visual editor. So I have a bit of a diagram in here again, uh, which I also want to skip over, but if anyone, anyone wants to dive into that later, I think this is recorded, so they can view it, or I can send it over. Just give me a heads up. Um, yeah, but I think this is, this is just what I uh, explained before, so no need to go over it again. Okay, so um, now we need to uh, do some magic inside of that wiki text uh, component for interacting with our slot data, um, which is again a non verbal template and only stores its data in semantic properties or cargo tables. Um, and then in the final step uh, in that UI component, we're going to show data from the slot and change data uh, in the slot. So, uh, you all know maybe that uh, Wikibase has developed a form extension called WS form. It is quite similar to page forms, I think, uh, but it, um, page forms is a, is a bit uh, easier to use sort of out of the box for people to be able to, uh, to edit pages. Uh, it does more stuff for you out of the box, which is of course great. Uh, sometimes we want to have a bit more control over our forms and that's why we developed a WS form. Um, and it would be great, of course, if page forms could also edit slots. Uh, but right now, uh, the only form extension that I know which can edit slots is a WS form. So the syntax for it is really simple uh, because the API endpoint itself is really simple, which we use, of course, for uh, making edits. Um, doesn't mean per se that the implementation is simple, but it well. Um, so what you just have to do is specify in your WS create section of your form which we use to specify a template to that we want to write to the slot, which is in our example, the version slot still. And then the template, this is just a template that I put in there for, uh, as an example, will also be, will be version. And we'll be writing a, uh, a parameter to it called version number, which we defined here. You can input anything you like there and it will uh, actually save it to that slot. So then if you have a template which stores that data into Semantic Media Wiki, immediately uh, on the next render of that page, uh, we should be able to uh, retrieve that data from the property. So what we can do in that one UI component, uh, we could of course separate the form and, um, and the data retrieval from the slot, but I wanna keep things a bit simple here. So um, I'm just gonna uh, create a form now, which also immediately uh, shows the value which is stored inside of that slot through Semantic Media Wiki. We can do that like this. This is a slightly different example from the example before here, because in this case, it also shows a value uh, using the show uh, parser function to retrieve the version number that we have stored into our slot. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, not much else to it. Um, I wanna move back to the uh, demo link again a little bit. So uh, there's also a button here, debug show slot data. Um, and that actually shows you uh, the template call that is in the um, in the slot right now. Um, yeah, this has version equals three in it. So whenever I would go into edit here and update that to 
version four, we can see that if I hit save again, and boom, boom, and it updates here right now to version four, but we can also see that in the slot data, it updated it to version equals four. And this template just stores in the property, of course, and then our UI component renders it in the form itself. And you can also see that uh, as a bit of a redundant proof, I think uh, that it works, uh, that it's also in, a, in the version of the properties. But, but that's basically it. Uh, if you get the, uh, the concept of the, uh, of the components and uh, WS form a bit, um, it's, it's really easy to set up and it's, it sets a very good basis for expanding your wiki with uh, whatever else you want to do. I think I have to take a bit of a look at the time because I only have a few minutes left. Um, so I think um, there's a lot more possible with this approach that we're taking. It can uh, it can be expanded uh, with with a lot of other ideas to uh, to do in inside of slots, uh, which I would love to hear from you guys. Um, so as some closing notes. Uh, this is part of the uh, open CSP that uh, Wikibase Solutions uh, maintains, which has various extensions in it, uh, like Chameleon uh, and WS slots already uh, pre-configured, and it also has WS search and WS space and more. Uh, but it is, of course, not uh, limited to this open CSP in any way. You can set this up yourself without need needing to be a part of the open CSP. Of course, we would love you to be. Um, but uh, we really want to operate on the philosophy that any component can also be used individually without having to be part of the open CSP. So therefore you can use this too. Um, it's not uh, officially released yet, but it is uh, stable. And uh, I asked uh, Marijn, who has developed WS Lots, if it can be available by request, and he agreed on that. So I think uh, anybody who wants it, can just shoot either Marijn uh, or me a, a message or odds and we'll get it to you. Um, so, and then uh, finally, I also want to recommend a talk from Jesse about Kubernetes. Uh, he also talks a bit about CSP and how we manage uh, everything about that using GitLab and Kubernetes. And then of course you should watch Robus's tutorial about the custom UI components because uh, that is really something. Um, Thanks, Victor. Yeah, we, yeah you have, uh, you... We have to move on. I, uh, are there, we can answer one uh, one question, I think. Yeah. But I don't see. We can also go uh, move questions to the coffee corner um, if, if we want. Okay, I think that's a great, a great idea. Let's have a look. 